Hello, this is Kevin Kaplan again from the Infant and Early Childhood Mental Health Team at the Children's Resource Center in Bowling Green, Ohio. This is a recorded version of our parent chat, and it is recorded so that parents who were able to attend the live version can still have access to this information. This parent chat topic was about building strong attachment from birth, and I will offer you strategies for parents and caregivers on building attachment However, this presentation is not a replacement or alternative to professional assessment and intervention. Please establish a family doctor, get with a doctor to work with you and keep them updated about any concerns that you may have. So the first question to think about is what is attachment? And this is in the social and emotional sense. The American Psychological Association defines attachment as the emotional bond between a human infant and its parent caregiver, it is developed as a step in establishing a feeling of security and is demonstrated by calmness while in the parent or caregiver's presence. So children with a strong attachment tend to be more calm in the parent's presence. Understanding attachment. And I thought this was important because attachment in the social emotional sense is a little different than what people sometimes think of. And I think what most people think of when they think of a relationship or attachment relationship is they often think of the loving attraction or biological connection that parents have with their children from birth or from adoption. Um, the one that seems to come natural to most parents, that thing that you just feel inside of you it's what you think may think of when you hear this phrase, attachment relationships. And while that loving attraction is, of course, a huge part of the bond between a parent and a child, and it goes a long way to building a relationship, it does not meet the social emotional needs that are necessary for a secure attachment. <clears throat> A secure attachment is built in addition to the natural bond and loving attraction that parents feel for their baby. The parental love and attraction that you naturally, naturally feel is, is a strong love for baby. It goes a long way to support baby. It's compassion for baby, meeting their physical needs and trying to reduce their suffering for those physical needs and providing some form of physical safety. Most parents, caregivers, and adults would feel compelled to do this for a baby. <clears throat> and a secure attachment is in addition to those things, an emotional connection. So knowledge of your own emotions as a parent caregiver and being able to recognize emotions in baby and nonverbal cues that baby displays on their face or in their body language. Are they tense, relaxed, smiling, frowning, flat, affect, flat face? Tuning into that and what does that mean and what can you do to respond to that? Responding to that with empathy. So not judging their needs, not judging what their feeling is or what they're expressing, but helping them to um, express that in, in a healthy way and being present and available for baby. So not doing anything else at the time and not multitasking, I guess you could say, it's not that you can't or shouldn't ever do that. You have to, to survive, right? What we're talking about here is that there are times when you're building attachment that you need to be present and available. You can't always be multitasking. And by present and available, that means just for baby. Building attachment is rooted in the caregiver's ability to cope with and manage life challenges in a healthy way. If adult and parent is not able to deal with life, then it's going to make it more difficult for them to build that attachment with baby. It's not that they can't. 
but this includes self-care and a degree of emotional intelligence within yourself as a parent in order to be present and available for the child. When parents are so overwhelmed with stress that they cannot be present and available or manage life challenges, a secure attachment is not being formed with baby. Parents must reach out to supports and resources to address their needs, their own needs, and to address their stress level. It's important with that said that you know maybe what resources are available in your area. Most areas have a 211 line that you can call to reach out for resources, just dialing those three numbers. You can also search 211 um, numbers online by zip code. So check that out if you're needing some resources. Give yourself some grace though in reminding yourself that, you know, sometimes we just need to give ourselves a little break. It's not possible for parents to be perfect or to provide superior care 100% of the time. As much as you would like to, as much as you know that your child needs it, it's not possible. So, you know, maybe you have to change the routine. Maybe you have to use a different formula. Whatever the case may be, it's important to be flexible. So what are the strategies for building attachment? These strategies are from the Devereaux Center for Resilient Children. And the first one is provide a safe base. Gently touch or pick up your infant when unfamiliar adults are around. Unfamiliar adults are scary for babies. And so this is an important time to show them that they are safe with you. This helps to reassure them and offer them language such as, breathe with me, I'll keep you safe. And that might sound kind of silly at first if you never thought like that or approached things that way before. But I can assure you that if you are calm enough to gently say, breathe with me, I'll keep you safe, that you can then download that calm to baby and baby will start to feel that calm as well. Especially if your baby is on alert, high alert with strangers. So you can see in the first picture there that there's a baby looking out. We're not sure where baby's looking, but baby's looking and her eyes are wide. It's almost as if she is on a high alert. And you notice though that she's not in any obvious sign of distress other than that. So I think that's because the caregiver has very calm grip on baby's torso, showing baby, reminding baby that they're secure and safe, right? So baby has a safe base from which to explore the world. Sure, she can still be scared. And um, our job isn't to take feelings away, but to just support baby while baby has feelings. You can see another picture there where a baby is grimacing and looks like they're experiencing something unpleasant and a dad is holding baby gently up to him with his arm around the back with his hand gently touching the back of baby's head and just being there and present for baby providing that safe base and reassuring baby that they're safe and then the bottom picture there you will see another dad holding baby gently but behind the head and baby looks to be like they're crying and <clears throat> as if something unpleasant happened to baby. But if you see dad's face kind of, he's not, it doesn't appear to be in any distress and looks to be very calm as if he is um, keeping his cool and that will be downloaded to baby as he continues to maintain his calm. With that said, if you talk to baby during that time, it's important to keep a calm voice because that's one of the ways that baby is going to determine that they're safe is based on your voice, tone a voice and your body language. If you're relaxed or tense, baby's gonna pick up on that. It used to be believed that babies didn't understand that stuff and more recent, 
uh, mental health and infant brain research has told us that that's not true. Babies are able to pick up on all that stuff. So be sure that you are in a calm state if you're trying to calm your baby down. Another strategy is respond. Respond to your infant's cues, babbles, and single words by smiling, copying their actions, and talking with them. Like, oh, there you are. Yes, Josh, that is a big smile. You're smiling just like this. You're saying, ma, ma, ma. Can you see how in the example, we said we copied what he was saying and we smiled by copying his face. Um, and then we acknowledge that by using language, helping him to build his language by sharing that with him. You can see in the top picture that it looks like mom is responding to baby with a smile, just reassuring baby and um, Dad is holding baby with a gentle touch, also reassuring baby, because it looks like they're out in public, maybe in a park or something. And then in the bottom picture, it looks like mom and baby are sharing the same facial expression and mom may be babbling or cooing to baby and baby looks like they're talking back. So isn't that fun? What a great way to connect and build attachment. Another strategy is be present, sit close and play with your infant. Avoid distractions, notice verbal and nonverbal cues, which shows a need for interaction. For example, there you are, you scooted on your belly to reach the toy. You did it. In doing that and being present and noticing their cues, we're telling them that they are important. They don't necessarily think that, but we're telling their brain that, and their brain is picking that up and recording that. Hey, I'm important. This adult thinks I'm important. And you can see in the picture there, there's a baby on their belly, and it looks like they're crawling kind of towards dad, and dad is down on his belly being present with baby, copying baby's facial expression, maybe even talking to baby, acknowledging baby's cues, the baby's trying to get to something or somewhere. That looks like so much fun. And then you'll see another baby at the bottom who is sitting on some sand and baby is looking up at someone. We can only assume that's probably a caregiver given the expression on her face, which looks like so much joy. And she is at the beach, which how much fun is that? And so I can only imagine that they have explored the sand and the ways, the sound, the smells, and maybe talked about that in some way um, and enjoyed that together. And so they were present in the moment with each other without distraction. Another strategy is use songs, rhymes, and finger plays. Interact with infants using songs, rhymes, and finger plays, such as pat a cake, pat a cake, baker's man, and I love you rituals by Dr. Becky Bailey. And Humpty Dumpty, Old Mother Hubbard are nursery rhymes that you could think of, or I thought of. From my childhood, you of course could use some from your childhood. And there's one on here that's more recent that I came across called This Milk Tastes Good. And it's a breastfeeding nursery rhyme. So not only could you feed baby, but you could also build some attachment with the nursery rhyme around feeding baby. How much fun would that be? Nursery rhymes, songs, and finger plays give us and baby a chance to interact, have fun, you know, explore each other's faces and build that connection and attachment. Another strategy is connect during feedings. So to go along with the um, 
the last nursery rhyme one, look and smile at infants while holding and rocking during feeding. Notice nonverbal cues of infant. So maybe baby is giving us a face that they don't like what they're eating. And so that might be a cue that we might have to respond to, right? Because we want them to eat and we want what they eat to be something that's pleasant for them. And so when you're connecting during feedings, a look, just look in their eyes, maybe smile, not the whole time, but most of the time would be helpful. Um, and maybe just talking back to them about whatever you're interpreting from their expression and nonverbals. You look like you really liked that bite. Let's try another one. Something like that would be fun. You can see in the picture that there are several babies being fed and they're all looking at their caregiver except one, but the caregiver's looking back at her. She looks like she's looking at the camera and is maybe either curious about the camera or isn't sure what's happening. So she's just a little distracted, but mom's still trying to connect with her by looking in her eyes and smiling. Another strategy is attunement. And with attunement, it's important to remain present and in a calm state so that you can be aware and responsive to the internal state of the infant. By internal, we mean, we mean emotional, what they're experiencing. We can then attach language to the experience, such as, you know, like this little kiddo's got a frown. We might say, it's hard to wait for your food. Breathe with me. You can handle it. Your food is almost ready. How calming is that? And you can download that to your baby if you can maintain that calm and you can express that calm in your voice. Baby will pick up on that. And how supported baby, baby will feel so supportive if you're able to do that. You'll see another baby there who has their arms up in the air. And I would interpret that nonverbal cue or body language to mean that they want picked up. And so I might reach my hands towards, like towards the side of their torso to pick them up and see how they respond. If their hands go down, then maybe they don't want picked up. And maybe I read that cue wrong, but the point is, is that I'm trying to read it. And maybe when they put their arms down, they smile. And so maybe that's a game and that's okay too. Um, but just recognizing, um, paying attention to those little cues is important. And on the bottom picture there, you'll see baby kind of frowning or grimacing as baby's trying to eat some food. Someone's trying to feed baby. Looks like baby's maybe concerned about the person taking the picture or the camera flash or something like that. Um, so you know, this might have set baby off and baby might not take another bite if she turns and begins crying or he turns and begins crying um, after this experience. So that might be a time when we might say, you know, you're safe, you can handle this, I'm with you. And just be present in that moment and calm. Another strategy is cuddle and hold. Hold, cuddle, and rock your infant throughout the day to give them the physical contact essential for their development. Essential ingredients for connection include eye contact, touch, presence in a playful way. So as you can see, all of these parents are doing most of those things. They're looking at baby, they're touching baby, it's just them and baby, so they're present. They're not doing anything else. And it looks somewhat playful. I mean, they don't look like they're being serious or anything. So I would say it's playful. And how much fun is that? The final activities in the live parent chat, we're sharing resources. And I wanted to just share with you where you might access these um, at childwelfare.gov. You can find a resource PDF on bonding with your baby, a one-pager 
that has a very similar information that could support you or those that you care for. And then there is also the Conscious Discipline I Love You Rituals from Becky Bailey. And I don't have a good way to explain that link, but you should search for I Love You Rituals by Dr. Becky Bailey, and you should be able to find something on that. So thanks for joining me. Please check out the rest of our YouTube channel and maybe subscribe and find us on Facebook at the CRC Infant Early Childhood Connection. I hope that you have a great day. Thanks for watching.